Welcome everyone. We got Ryan Kavanaugh from the TypeScript team here, and we're going to talk about something that is, I consider it to be his baby anyway, but it's a feature of TypeScript that he introduced a lot of people to, and it helps you go through your code and make sure that there are not cases that are uncovered in your code. So welcome, Ryan. Hey there. How's it going? This is a, a continuation from a previous video we had on the channel, and we did this t-indexing with number thing. So if you want to know about t-number and what that is, go take a look at that. But basically, we're extracting a union of strings that are the members of all of the things inside of this const array here. And so then we're taking that and going over a switch. So, Ryan, what, where did you come up? Did you come up with this idea or for a certain reachable, or how did this all come about? Um, I don't know. where. I think this... Once the never type got introduced, this is a pretty straightforward application of it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't recall. I mean, probably Anders, but probably also, you know, uh, you give something to people on the internet and they'll figure out every way to use it in about 20 minutes. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't right. claim credit for a first discovery or anything. It's it's just out there. All right. Fair um, enough. But yeah, I, I wrote the Stack Overflow post because I, I wanted people to know how to use it and I wanted the points. Um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of where people mostly run into it for the first time. Um, uh, oh, also, because I posted that from time. all this time, I thought you just wrote the answer, but I saw today that you wrote the question too. So you're a little Stack Overflow farmer, aren't you? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So okay, so the the bug is that I just introduced it. Actually, if you guys were watching, I added Jigglypuff Bubblegum to our colors array here, but we're not covering it in a case. And actually, if we hover over to RGB, we're going to see that it returns those three things or undefined which is not really what our code is intending. We're hoping to catch all of these things. To fix that, we can add a cert unreachable here, and it's going to give us that error. So can you walk us through, Ryan? I know that's not much code, but like walk us through what a cert unreachable is really saying. Yeah, I think the things that I like to call out when I think about this are that um, we're going to have an argument of type never, which basically means effectively this function shouldn't be called, right? There should no, be no legal way for your code to actually invoke this function. You know, another thing I always do is just put X in the error message so that I get to know mm. what the value is. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so this function, you know, you could imagine that the intent of this function was actually to return undefined at the bottom. And if you think about like what life would look like if you had no implicit returns turned on, you would have that return undefined down here. But normally, you know, if you, if you have three cases, you probably want all four, right? So we're just kind of using TypeScript's control flow analysis to figure this out. So we go in with color, and up here, uh, it's got all four options. And then if we're down, um, if we think about what it looks like in the default case, TypeScript knows that we've returned out of all these other places. So if we look at what color is at this position, mm -hmm. it's going to be, yeah. oh, you can't see my tooltips. I can, but we can uh, we can throw it up there oh, with we got two some, slash. We got some two slashing going on, but I don't have the two slash installed, so I can't oh, see it right. on my well, screen. But I can see it, I can see it on your screen, so this works out. Anyway, okay. <laughs> we can see that color has uh, just the one remaining Jigglypuff case left. So, yeah, if we try to pass Jigglypuff down to a sort of unreachable, we, we set this function up that you can't call it under ideal conditions. Um, and indeed, this is not an ideal condition because we forgot to handle it. So that's how we can use never to our advantage to make this sort of illegal function call work in our favor. Mm -hmm. I, I think some subtleties that are interesting here are like, I guess the first is the, the no implicit returns thing, right? Like if you turn on no implicit returns, this function has an error that you you implicitly returned out the bottom. The other thing, so like that's one option where you kind of don't need this is you just have the no implicit returns. So that said, I, I think sometimes you hit this in cases where it's not just about returning out of a function, right? Yeah. The other one is like, you, you can always just write a return type annotation up here and then yeah, you'll see an we, error somewhere. We... Oh yeah, yeah we right can there. actually comment that out. You'll see an error that uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you forgot to return in one case. But if right. you look at this, it's it's not the best error experience because you're like, well, what do you mean I forgot? I felt like I handled all the colors. Mm -hmm. And then what you would do to debug that in this case is you would, you would just go back and you would like write this code again, right? Just to figure out what the missing color was. So, I mean, why not just have it there and then the return type annotation becomes, you know, you can have it or not have it, right? People have their references. I guess the last thing that's interesting from a maybe language design perspective is it's fairly common for people to just sort of say like, oh, the existence of unreachable code should be a per se error. It should just be not legal at all to ever have code that the static analyzer thinks can't be reached. And, you know, I, I kind of agree with that from a sort of syntactic perspective. Like if your code is syntactically unreachable and you just put a return statement up here, 
Mm-hmm. But if that's fishy, right? Like that's super fishy. You maybe have a misplaced brace or parenthesis or something. In the case where something is like semantically unreachable, I think it's it's very muddied where you kind of want to say like, oh, this code is not reachable except if something has gone wrong. But the point of the code is to say, is to tell you that something has gone wrong through an exception or, or some other mechanism, right? So I, I always find this to be an interesting counterexample to that argument that, you know, code that's unreachable is, is often still sometimes serving a purpose in your code. And, you know, then you get into deeper conversations about like, well, how do you get 100% code coverage if you think that 100% code coverage is something that you absolutely need? Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe the rule should be more subtle and say you can reach you can reach code as long as, you know, this was explicitly marked as returning never, right? But that's sort of like, you know, it, it's weird, right? Because like you're going to just throw a debugger statement here and say like, oh, well, should debugger statements be necessarily reachable? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, now you're really on thin ice, right? <laughs> yeah, especially since some I've I've worked with uh, some bundlers and things that just take them out without asking you. I think there's defaults sometimes, so it can get right. nice squirrely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there are other ways that people do this, by the way. So we have like some people will just make a like let unreachable never equals color or something. And then this mm-hmm. kind of will error in the same sort of place. And then you can you can throw your your error here. Um, you mm-hmm. know, th- there's a thing going around with like an iffy where, oh, man, let's see if I can see like X never. So we're going to like put this thing. Uh, would it be void? Something like that. And then mm-hmm. color. It's very complicated. I, there are some people that are. Oops, I didn't even spell void. Right. There are some people that are very convinced mm-hmm. that this makes sense. But the nice thing about you know, TypeScript is we have, we can put like what this does and explain it so that when people see it for the first yeah. time there, it's like very clear. Uh, you know, a new option is, uh, oh, and then that should work, right? I've never seen it. Yeah. Let's, let's add Jigglypuff Bubblegum back. Oh, wow. That's a cool one. And this this should minify out, right? So that's kind of mm-hmm. cool. Um, oh yeah. Where it's like the let unreachable. It's like now you have an unused variable and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So um, that's neat. Yeah. The last thing I was gonna say that people do is sometimes people put a message separately in here. Uh, oops, I'm mm-hmm. thinking ahead. Like my message uh, specific to this thing. Mm-hmm. So then that way you can just put in a um, string or whatever. You can you can put in a string and then you know maybe you put that somewhere in here you can also add the actual thing so people kind of customize this sometimes to whatever their preferences are but yeah that's the Mm -hmm. meat and potatoes of it yeah you can kind of go as far as you want and i think the the likelihood that you think you're actually going to hit this kind of informs which one of these you want to do yeah i mean after all typescript is an incremental type system right so sometimes i've been in Mm -hmm. situations where i'm in code bases where there just isn't a like here we have our type for what we expect Mm -hmm. sometimes i just don't know and i might even i mean i guess the middle ground is to just do uh console.error or something and put in x and message and all these other things because you may not want your Mm -hmm. program to blow up as soon as it gets to this statement because you might know that it's not trustworthy at this point yet so cool yeah yeah yeah. Well, anything else about this? This is a this is a cool little feature. It's good to know about anyway. Yeah, I think it's something where um, if you think about like the never type, like it wasn't designed for. We didn't put it in place for this reason, but it's it's just one of those super useful things that you can do. So, yeah, go forth and be useful, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Ryan. All right, have a good one.